The current date is May of 2023. Welcome to the Time Capsule Podcast, where every episode is like its own little time capsule. We are leaving these recordings here and won't be touching them for at least 20 years, but you guys can listen whenever and wherever you like. So, here we go. Welcome back, listeners. I want you to take a moment to picture this with me. It's May. The sun is shining. It's finally out. The snow is long since melted away. The temperature's getting nice and warm, but the full heat of summer hasn't set in yet. School's about to release for the summer vacation. The pools are all opening up again. All is well in the world. Also, I'm picturing that I'm, in particular, that I'm back in, like, the fourth grade. But just because uh, I guess that helps, because I want to be a kid again. But, all the same, May is my favorite month of the year. And uh, I'll always love it for that. So it's just so many good things all occurring at once. Don't get me wrong, I love Christmas too, but May beats it out just by a little for me. Uh, so welcome back. Hey Brian, how are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right off the bat, I'm just going to let everyone know, uh, David could not, did not make it to this recording session for this month. I We don't know why. But we've been actually sitting here for about an hour, hour and a half, uh, almost two hours, I'd say. And uh, he hasn't been responding to us, reaching out to him, even though our previous, like, at least two just dis- like conversations via text, he was like, yeah, I'll be there. So I, yeah, we're putting you on blast, man. <laughs> uh, he did graduate last night for anybody wondering. That's so true. I mean, um, he could have stayed out late, I guess. I mean, I would assume he would and gotten really tired, but. Even um, so, we set our meeting time for 11, so, uh, um, yeah, whatever, yeah. I'm going to feel so, terrible, get ready to edit this out if it turns out that he, like, got in a car accident or something. <laughs> oh my word. Oh gosh, Ugh, here we go. No, you know what, if you're going to put him on blast, I'm going to let you feel terrible if you No, got wait a minute, right? that's not, I mean, come on, he made a commitment and then didn't hold up to it, that's pretty bad. Uh, yeah. We have to address uh, that. That's okay. true. But anyway. regardless, he is not here with us today, and we will miss him. Yeah, hopefully he'll be able. Don't to say it like he's month. dead. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, okay. we will miss him. Are you kidding me? He's, with that? he's dead to us. No, just oh kidding. my gosh, <laughs> drama, drama. Alert. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. I almost didn't. I almost didn't make it either because I, like I said, I, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to record today, but. Okay, um, yeah, I, I feel you, man, I feel you. I have other things to do today as well, but that's okay. We're here now, and we're recording, and you're here listening to us, and that is what matters. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, things, are getting, things are getting spicy at the Quinterkle Corporate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, without further ado, let's get into small talk. Uh, biggest piece of news that I have, well, for me personally anyway, is that I am in the middle of buying a condo right now. Ooh, congratulations. Yeah, I'm finally going to have my own place. I'm going to be getting a mortgage, so I'm going to live in style and debt. <laughs> and debt. Yeah. It's going to be Gosh, so neat. so you're so you're buying and not renting? Yeah, and and uh because I want to if I'm I'm going to be like, you know, getting into the real estate game, right? And getting a place mm-hmm. to live. I wanted to have equity in there, right? Because like yep. this place is nice and I'm getting a pretty good deal on it. I could probably turn around in a year and sell it and and make profit you know what i mean like i Mm -hmm. that's just a how ridiculous the market is right now and b uh how how nice this place is like is live in ready or move in ready sorry and uh i might even get a cat with it in the deal so uh oh i I wouldn't do that but well you don't like cats i love cats are you allergic i I don't remember i am yeah yeah okay that's why you're freaking i can be around yeah i could be around them but they they drive my allergies insane yeah okay there you go well i'm I mean, I think technically I am a little allergic, but, like, it's, like, the difference between, like, standing in the same room as a cat and then, like, rubbing my face on it, <laughs> which I'll probably do anyway, but that's not the point. Uh, also, cool thing that I'm absolutely loving right now is that my, recently my employers um, were doing a, a 90-day run where they're giving us four-day work weeks if we chose to take it, and I did, and so I'm... I'm working four 10-hour shifts a week now, and, and I have Fridays off, and it's wonderful. Ah, Three-day weekend is... every weekend, baby. 
Yeah, that's pretty nice. I I've enjoyed my four day my four day work week. I mean, my job is garbage, but you know. Are you I've still enjoyed... clocking forty hours a week? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I would be honest. I was not expecting that in the slightest. Like it just came out of the blue. They called me and they pulled us all together and they're like, "Hey, we're gonna be doing this." And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh no!" That like peaked my audio. I'm so sorry, listeners. <laughs> Apologies, headphone <laughs> listeners. Well, that was it, supposed it to be a gasp. Like... It actually like cut out on my end, so all I saw was like my, your mouth opened up, and that was oh. it, <laughs> and just like silence. <laughs> on my audio, it's just like a, a like a thick bar all the way up and down to the top and bottom of the thing <laughs> oh, <laughs> on the way no. forward. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'll select that amount of audio, and I'll just quiet it down. Like yeah, yeah, 10 de- if 10 you, yeah, I appreciate that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> or cr- crank up the gain on it, so it's like <laughs> breaks the speaker, the bass boost it. No. Um, so also, uh, since, since last we talked on this little podcast of ours, I went on a little trip to Florida, um, down to Destin, Florida in, uh, in, uh, March. Uh, so I just kind of want to give a brief breakdown of that real quick. I'll try to be, I try to like not take too long. Um, so, but I just have a couple things I want to mention, right? So on the way up there, we stopped at this place called Bucky's. Have you ever, have you, do you know what that is? I've yeah I've heard of it yep yeah so I don't, I don't yeah I haven't stopped there but yeah for those uh, who who don't know what that is which would probably mainly be the non American audience at, at least I mean I didn't know what it was until this trip to be fair but it's it's a it's a gas station chain that is it started in Texas and it's kind of spread to a couple other states in the South and the when, when the one we stopped at was in Alabama and and it's like a it's like if a, a a Walmart and a gas station had a love child, right? Like you've got this massive building with, it's like st- it's only one level, but it's it's sprawling, right? And it's stuffed to the brim with all sorts of merch and like food and others and snacks and what all, all the like at home decor, all this crap you can buy, right? And like lawn chairs and fire pits, and then out, outside the front of the building are is like it's like 185 or no, it might be like 250 gas pumps. Like that's just the scale of how big these operations are. I don't remember. That's it's insane. Like, it's it's over a hundred. It's at least one hundred fifty. But I'm pretty sure it's like two hundred something gas pumps out there. And uh, the only thing it's not is the truck. It's not a truck stop. Like there are explicit signs. It'll, it'll say, "Hey, not a truck stop." But there's there's also like uh, there's a designated area where you can take your dog and ha- let it take a crap and run around a bit. And uh, yeah, it's just a huge place. Like the parking lot was huge. It was a little mind blowing um, how how much uh, just size there was for a gas station, right? Like it's a very American thing and a very Texan thing, and uh, it was cool. Um, <laughs> you know, we got uh, Bucky's hats and uh, shirts. The logo is a I think he's a gopher. Yeah, he's a gopher, and he's mm-hmm. yeah. wearing a red baseball cap. We got Bucky nuggets, and th- what they're known for. One of the things they're known for is a barbecue brisket sandwich. We got a couple of those delicious. Highly recommended if you ever go to a Bucky's. And uh, on this trip, my sister and her boyfriend got engaged, so they're going to yeah, be getting married. Knows. Yeah, they're going to be getting married. They actually don't; they haven't set a date, but they think it's going to be sometime next year. So there's that. And uh, I think I don't know if there were any memes made actually about it. I think I might have seen one or two, but it definitely made its round in the 24 hour news cycle. While I was in Florida, um, the their like state emergency alert system accidentally sent a a practice alert out at four in the morning, and and oh. it woke us all up. It was just as annoying as it at uh, as it uh, sounds. And I uh, hate that. Yeah, it, was, it woke me up. I was so the the way the like living situation. We like rented a condo for a week, right? And so. Grace had a, my sister had a, a bedroom all to herself, and it was like a, either a full or a queen size bed, pretty, pretty, pretty rad, and then my parents had the upstairs bedroom, and then Caleb and I, which is Grace's boyfriend, now fiance, uh, we were in bunk beds in the upstairs living room, <laughs> so like, <laughs> uh, and it had like curtains, it was like they were built into the wall, and they had a curtain, right, so I'm just in my little sleeping chamber, and all of a sudden, I, you know the emergency alert I, i'm i not good at making that sound but it like goes off right uh wakes me up wakes everyone up pretty annoying 
pretty annoying stuff. They need to get their crap together down there. But other than that, very <laughs> enjoyable trip. Had delicious good, shrimp good. at least three times that week. I'm glad you all got back safely. Looks like so, yeah. or sounds like a, a lot of exciting things happen over at Jake's house. Oh yeah, have you seen the <laughs> FNAF movie trailer? I sent it to you. Remember? Oh, that's right, you did. I I <laughs> why I think I watched it independently of that message though. Like I think I had I had it up already on my PC, and then you like sent that text, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing that exists. Also, yeah, but there's also I, before you sent that they also released like a teaser, like a poster or whatever. Yeah, yeah they really you see they that? several posters. Yep. Man, mm-hmm. I'm so hyped for this movie. Me too. I'm, I'm so, so glad excited. that they went with uh, Blumhouse. They're like the kings of horror. Yep. It's the They're perfect so storm. Oh my gosh, that trailer is so hype. Oh my mm, word. Yeah. I'll, um, uh, I'll, I'll let you talk for a bit. I still have a couple things I want to talk about, but let's. I'll let you speak. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, mine are very small. Um, you know the game uh, Power Wash Simulator? Uh, yeah. They have a SpongeBob mod now <laughs> where you're, like, spraying things down in Bikini Bottom. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, that's awesome. Are you playing gosh, as SpongeBob, or is it just, like, you took your Power Wash truck it... and drove it down into the ocean? <laughs> I th- yeah, I think, I don't, I didn't, I don't remember exactly. It's just, I remember that you have, like, a cartoony-looking gun. Oh, that's awesome. So, like, yeah. And so basically, yeah, it looks like the cartoon uh, uh, kind of animation style of SpongeBob. It's, it's pretty great. Um, I mean, I don't really have any other big news. I mean, so I, my the company I work for is kind of starting to go downhill a little bit. So I'm oh, starting really? to look for, yeah, I'm starting to look for a new job. I mean, dude, most I of the never thought I, I'd hear the day that you would say that. I never well, thought. So <laughs> I, I enjoy the job itself. Mm-hmm. But upper upper management is screwing people people over just like like crazy uh, recently. I don't think there's any way um, you can go where that won't happen at least a little. I well I know, but it's it's gotten so bad. So I used to be able to make up to three and a half percent commission on any services that I sold, um, and now they have basically cut off to where you can't make over two percent. Oh wow. Is, um the sales side of the store um they took away their commission entirely wow so they only make you know a base amount they don't make commission um where i've i've gotten i've gotten in trouble three times over the last month for literally doing my job like that's it i haven't done anything wrong i've been helping people i have been selling stuff and that's it. And I've gotten in trouble for doing those things because I'm not doing it the way they want. I was going to say, like, what's their, what do like, they so like, say the, their reason is for making you put so, in trouble? You know what I mean? So I'm a, I'm a loop tech. Okay. So we have, I do basic stuff like oil changes, transmission, flu- I, all your fluids, basically. I do tire rotations. I do uh, mounting and balancing tires, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, I We're supposed to get smaller tickets. Like we'll, we'll get tickets that are oil changes and rotations like that's it that's always that's you know a basic ticket for us then you on the other side you have b techs who do um you do breaks they do basically everything that we do but they do more stuff on top of so they do they do breaks they do um more in-depth stuff with the engine and stuff okay so they get bigger tickets well two times over the last month i've had i have not had a car to work on because all the cars on lubrec have been are being worked on so i've got nothing to do Mm-hmm. So I will be helping out a B tech because it's helps them get their job done faster so they can get more tickets. So I get paid hourly just to being there, but they get paid on what they flag. Oh, so they have, they have, yeah, they have to flag a certain amount. Otherwise they don't get paid. Um, so I'm helping them get their jobs done faster so they can get more, done, more jobs done so they can get more, like basically they get paid more because I have nothing to do. I have nothing to do at that point and I'm not getting, you know, I'm just getting paid to stand around. So, I help them out, but then I get yelled at because my boss is like, they're B-Techs, they don't need help, you don't need to be over here, go do your own stuff. I'm like, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> like, why Why am I getting in trouble for literally just helping out a coworker? Interesting. You know, I kind of have, I, I experienced that too. Not, I'm not getting in trouble for it, but like, my job is very like order-based. Like, I don't, if there's no orders coming in, then there's nothing for me to do. I apologize. I'm trying to adjust the mic and put as much distance between myself and my lap and 
but uh, between the mic and the laptop as possible because it's generating a lot of noise right now you're gonna have to yep to remove that background noise in the editing room i apologize for that brian uh anyway (laughs) yeah if there's no orders coming in then i don't really have anything to do um generally though there's usually always at least like one order on the floor and and uh but like yeah sometimes we'll hit like slow like slumps or like every three months we'll we'll do inventory right and 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 generally that gets done pretty quickly or there's just not a lot to inventory and so we'll just kind of be sitting there doing nothing almost sometimes like it almost goes for an entire shift it's a little crazy but i don't you know you don't hear me complaining like I don't mind it if no, if like the entire shop is dead, like there's no but nothing going on. I don't mind it, but I'm not gonna sit around and not do anything while my coworkers are struggling to get you know their hours done and get their like right, basically yeah. they're they're not yeah they're not getting paid if they don't finish up the job. That's so like I'm not gonna man. sit around yeah I'm not gonna sit around and not do anything while they're struggling to get money. Like I'm gonna go help them out, but then I get in trouble for it. It's really annoying. But most of my coworkers are probably gonna leave by the end of the summer. And I really, I mean, I really don't want to, f- I don't feel like being the only person there with a bunch of newbies or <laughs> even like being short staffed, which we already are. So we'll be even more short staffed after everybody else leaves. So I'm like, I if everybody else is leaving, I'm not, I'm not going to stick around and make myself suffer. Mm-hmm. So I'm, yeah, looking around at other, other, other options. Dude, that reminds <laughs> me of, uh, do you remember when I worked at Power Play? Yes. Okay. The turnover rate there was absolutely abysmal. In a matter of months, I went from newest person to, like, in the four people who have been working there the longest, not including managers. And in less than a year, I had three completely different managers from when I started. Because there yep. was always a, there was a total always, usually, what they, what they like, tried to have is a total of three managers, uh, two managers and one general manager. And, uh... For a while there, it was it was uh, two of the the normal managers were the same, and then the, the the general manager eventually changed, and then yeah, within the space of a year, all three of them had changed to different people, like they quit or whatever, and new people got hired. It was ridiculous. Yeah, like it's yeah, it the, this company is just kind of going downhill. It's frustrating. So I'm I am currently in a job search. Mm. I mean, I I still have the job, but I'm I'm yeah looking around. Do you do sales at all? Like, do you? Like try to like I d- sell people I additional, don't... like, um, freaking, what's that called? Yeah. Maintenance work or like parts? As you yes do and know. no. Um, I do inspections when they bring when they bring the car. And my my first job is to do an inspection on it. So make sure there's nothing or like write down any leaks that they have. Look at the service history to make sure they have all their fluids are up to date and every all their services are up to date. And if they don't, then I recommend it. I don't handle the actual selling point I, I just i put on there what they need to get done and then it, it goes over to the service writer and they talk to the customer about it and then if they if the customer buys any of that then i get you know a certain percentage of all the services that they sell hmm. so yeah i look at all the leaks i look at um to make sure they're like their transmission fluid isn't bad i make sure their brake fluid isn't bad i check the brakes i check the tire depth uh, the tread depth and make sure everything's not, you know, everything is road safe and, you know, is they're not going to risk getting into an accident. Right. Basically. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't handle the actual talking to the customer selling stuff. I just tell them what I just, I basically type in the computer, what everything that they need and then let the service yeah. writer talk. Right. To them. Yeah. Like recommendation as to what should be. Yep. Done. yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I've nice. gotten quite good at it too. <laughs> I think I think I've had I've I have had the most amount of up sales over the last four months so far in Lubrac. I've yeah. been top dog. Nice. And I'm, I'm I'm yeah I'm about to hit another record. Like so January, I had a record of twenty two thousand dollars worth of up sales or no sorry twenty six thousand dollars worth of up sales. And on on average, you're lucky to hit ten ten k a month. But uh, January I hit twenty six. I hit nineteen in December, and right now I'm about I'm at seventeen, so I'm on track to hit another twenty k by the end of the month. Mm. So I'm I'm getting up there on the uh, records list for having the most up sales. Mm, okay, that's cool. 
Um, so uh, it probably doesn't make any sense to anybody really listening, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I just have a couple more things to like talk about and small talk. Um, so I re I, I, this is like kind of a minor thing, but I recently got a new case for my phone and it's, it's the kind that has like a built in, uh, kickstand, right? So you, you flip out the little, like it's a ring on there and you can, you can either leave it like that and set it on the ring or you can, uh, I don't know if the mic is picking up that noise, but you can rotate it. It rotates freely 360 degrees, but, uh, if you, you can rotate it 90 degrees and then stick your finger in it to have a enhanced grip. And man, having a, I don't use the grip part, use it for grip so much, but having a, a stand essentially built into your phone is kind of life changing because this is the first time I've ever had a case where it has a built in stand and it's pretty great. Gotta say, I recommend doing that. It's like the one I have. Yeah. Very, very similar. So uh, yeah, look, no, that's exactly the same. Yeah. We have the exact same phone case. We're holding our phones <laughs> up to our cameras for all you listening yeah. at home. That's exactly the same one I have. That's funny. Yeah, that's pretty great. What? I wonder if my if the brand is visible on here. I don't think it is. Uh, whatever. I don't think so. I'm too lazy to look but, it up on yeah, Amazon. This little thing right here is actually a magnetic. Yeah, too, yeah. So you can, I don't I have, have any mounts for mine, granted. but Yeah, I've got a magnetic mount in my car that I prop it up there. That's nice. Uh, anyway, one last thing. And I'm really, I, I wanted to hear David's thoughts on this too. I'm really torn that he's not here but uh i i was thinking that whenever we like seal this capsule this podcast away to let it sit for the remainder of the 20 years uh probably like year three or four uh i think we should make a physical capsule too and put stuff in it that we we open i don't know whether it'd be better to open it when we go back to the first episode or the last probably the last just to keep it in, in the maintain that timing with when we made it. But um, the main thing is like, I wouldn't know, I don't know what exactly I would want to put in there yet. Right. So mm-hmm. anyone listening, anyone listening out there, feel free to make suggestions in the comments or at what, however manner you want to do it. Speak pipe. Once again, I keep, I chronically, I'm forgetting to check the speak pipe. Not that there's probably. I was literally just. Uh- yeah, I was literally just about try- trying to pull up the, uh... gosh, what is it? I forgot what the app is that I use now. Anchor? Anchor, yeah. I was just trying to pull that up to see if we had any messages on there, but it's not loading for some reason. Mm, yeah, that's uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, anyway, let's get into this episode's meat and potatoes, shall we? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Getting into trouble. So, I I'll I'll kick it off with my first story. What the heck? Did you hear that? What was that? I did. What was that? Was that your computer? It might have been. Hold on. I. Oh, it was my phone. I thought I had it on mute. I didn't. Okay, I could have sworn <laughs> it was on mute. That was weird. That that totally confused the crap out of me. Anyway, I call this one. <laughs> I call this one dancing naked in the bathroom. That sounds disturbing. <laughs> it's not quite as bad as it sounds, I'll grant you. So let me ask you a question, Brian. When okay. you were like a little kid, we're talking like like first half of elementary school, like kindergarten through and I know I know you didn't go to like public school, so like the the the, the lines there maybe blurred a bit, but like first through like second ish grade. Maybe not even second grade. I don't remember when I stopped doing it, but it must have had to been pretty mm-hmm. early, but did you ever like when you went to the bathroom and you were you you were no. you were at a urinal, right, or or, or you were nope. standing to pee? Did you ever pull your pants all the way down to your ankles? No, I did not. I was not one of those kids. <laughs> right, sure. Well, there are two kinds of people in this world: people who pulled their pants all the way down to their ankles when they were a kid, when they were peeing, standing up, and flyers. No, I'm just <laughs> flyers. Uh, well, no. I'm not above admitting that I used to do that. Okay. Uh. I, you know, it, it's it's you sometimes sometimes you just gotta learn to do it properly, okay? And not not okay. Listen, listen, listen. In <laughs> children's clothing and in certain certain like clothing you buy, not every pair of pants has a fly, okay? And not every pair of underwear has a has the time saver hole, okay? There's another there's another uh, 
that's in my defense, okay? And again, I was a very, very young kid. Like, we're talking... Oh, jeez. Talking, like, fresh out of potty training almost, right? So, uh, and, and I had friends that did the same thing, okay? And, and even so, it's not like... I, like, eventually I, I got it to where it was consistently to my knees and then, like, up to my waist, right? It's not, it's not like I was... It, they were around my ankles for, like, three years, okay? It's not that bad. The point is, uh, my... We, my, I was standing near my friend, like, we were in, like, I, I don't think we were directly next to each other at the urinals, but we were both at the urinals, and we had our pants down low, right? And, and it was the middle of winter, uh, and we're, we're in the, in the bathroom during a break. I think everyone else is at recess, and, uh, and, but, so, yeah, we, they were, because we, we came in, because we had our coats on. We had our winter coats on, and, and they were, they were the kind that kind of hang a little lower than your waist, right? So we, we had our hands in our front pockets of our coats, and we, we, we had them held down so that and any and anything that would have been normally exposed for have from having our pants off was covered by our coats, and we were just kind of we weren't even really dancing; we were just kind of like swaying back and forth while singing goofily, right? <laughs> and it's not like we were swinging our our dongs all over the place. We weren't like moving around either. We were just we were swaying in place, right? And then a third kid walks into the bathroom and is like, "Are you guys dancing naked in the bathroom?" And we were like, "Uh, no." Like we both uh, were like, <laughs> we both like stopped at the same time and looked over. And we're like, "Yo!" And then he like was like, "I'm telling," and he freaking ran out and told on us. I don't even uh, like. Sure, you shouldn't be dancing with your pants down in the bathroom, but we got called to the principal's office for this. Okay, it, it was a definite overreaction on administration's behalf part. Okay. And so oh, gosh. he, the principal is like, gives us a lecture. He's like, he turns to my friend. He's like, do you understand why that was wrong? Why you shouldn't do it? And my friend's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, go back outside. And he leaves. And then I'm like, I, I get it too. And I go to leave. And he's like, no, you sit back down. We need to, I don't think you understand. I think you're just saying that because your friend said that. Like I felt targeted there. And uh, I ended up in there for a couple more minutes before I was finally able to leave. And that's Jeez, that dude. <laughs> it didn't cause, definitely didn't cause any childhood trauma. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm definitely not still salty. <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> What's that teacher's name? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that. I don't even remember uh, what grade he was, <laughs> but I do remember the principal's name. But that's not the point. I remember his name because um, he was a cool. He was otherwise a cool principal. Okay. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, and and at oh, that point gosh. in my life. He was one of two uh, male, like, like every every single teacher except for one sixth grade teacher at my elementary school was a woman, right? And 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 after that, like that principal, um, left that school when I was in like third or fourth grade, and he was replaced by a woman. So it was like every teacher and like school administrator I'd ever known, except for him and the sixth grade teacher was a woman. So it was like cool to see some male influence there anyway yeah i'll pass the mic on to you now brian okay um let's see my first story so i'm not sure some of these stories may or may not warrant a explicit content rating we'll um, determine that as we go yeah um it's but my first story when we get there the first story does not it was i It wasn't, I didn't even, it wasn't even technically my fault. So I didn't, I shouldn't have gotten trouble. But the reason, the reason I did was because, um, well, basically what happened was at my old house in, in Parkville, um, we, so one day my, the window in my, in my parents' bedroom had been left open. And some bugs had gotten in, and it was basically it, it, so when the wind was blowing around and blew some leaves in there, and it, it, it made a, a small mess. And so my parents got home, and they were they were mad. I mean, they were ticked off, and they were Fair trying enough. to figure out they were trying to figure out which one of us kids left the window opened open. up. Yeah, opened up the window yeah, and funny. left it open. It's a classic who done it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Um, there were seven of us growing up, okay? You were all pointing at each other, too, weren't you? No. Oh. So there were there seven <laughs> of us. The two girls below me were too young to even know how to open up the window. Okay, yeah. 
and everybody else above me was older and smarter and didn't want to take the responsibility for it. So you're so, saying you know you didn't do it? Oh, no, I didn't do it. I know for sure. Yeah. But okay. ev- everybody else was you know pointing at did? me. No idea. Okay. I have no clue. <laughs> everybody else is pointing at p- yeah, they're all pointing at me, all of my siblings throwing me under the bus. Oh, that's fine. And then I was like sitting at we were all sitting in a room and I was like, What I was like, I didn't do it and they're like my siblings were like, Yeah, we know you didn't, but if you go in there and you know, take the blame for it, like maybe it'll be easy for you. And I was like, Oh, okay, like that's not fair, but all right. And again, I was small, I don't even remember how old, I was really tiny, so I was like, you know, I I'm not gonna argue with them. I wasn't smart enough to do that. <laughs> So I went into mom's and and was like, well, so I was like, I was the one that opened it up and left it open. And I was like, I didn't know that all this stuff would get in. It didn't have a screen? Not that one. That was like the one window in the room that didn't have a screen <laughs> on it. Yeah. Yeah. So I got in trouble for something I didn't even do. All because my siblings decided to throw me under the bus. Dude, that's like straight out of Malcolm in the middle. You gotta take the blame for this one, dude. <laughs> That's yeah, that was not that was not fun. I mean, it's funny now though, right? Oh, I'm still salty about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Anyway, uh, my next story. This one's called the Big Red Cheese. So, uh, this once again takes place in elementary school. Most of these do, and uh, <laughs> I we were making like an art project in class. Uh, in which we all had to have a tree in there that had, and this wasn't in art class. This was like in the normal classroom, but we were doing it, doing an art thing in there. And we, we were part of like the tree was like, you could use a hole punch to punch out holes from a red piece of construction paper to make little apples to put on your tree. Pretty cute little, little detail there. Nice and easy to, you don't have to cut out the shape of an apple. Made it a lot easier. So I, it gets to a point where. I was one of, like, the last people to grab the red sheet to punch out some apples. And I saw it, and I was like, ooh, hello. This piece of paper has so many holes in it at this point that it looks like Swiss cheese. And I love cheese. And my favorite color is red. I know. I'll make a giant red piece of cheese. So I just keep (laughs) punching more and more holes. And, I, you know, this is, like, ADHD brain, right? And so I'm sitting there punching holes. You jerk. I don't know if that's gonna come through in the recorded audio, but he's we we so we we um conference call with each other via Discord when we record these episodes, and he he put a cricket sound effect through the new soundboard feature in Discord. Yeah, he's using it again now. He's doing sad trumpet noise. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. All right, keep going, keep going. That was funny. Anyway, he gets to a point where I've been punching holes in this piece of paper for like several minutes now, and my teacher. It's like, uh, hey, Jake, what are you doing? You know, don't you think you have enough apples? What are you doing? And I was like, I've, I said this like matter. I, I have always had a, at, at that age, I always had issues with tone, right? So I said it very matter of factly as if it was supposed to be pretty obvious what I was doing. I was like, come on, I'm making a big red cheese. What's it look like? And I got in trouble for sassing her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's funny. I could totally see you doing that too. I didn't even. I wasn't. I. I can assure you, I wasn't trying to be rude. I was just stating it matter of factly. Like, hey, I'm just you know making a big red cheese. Clearly, right? Because everyone else knows it can read my thoughts and knows what I'm thinking. I got sent to the safe seat. Do you ever? Uh, do you know what that is? No idea. Okay, so this is, is like a, the dunce chair. It's a well, not. It's not far from that. Actually, it's a. It's a public school concept from. I don't know how widespread this is across the country, actually. Fellow Americans, let me know if you also had this in your elementary school experience. But basically, uh, apart from all the other desks in the classroom, there's one desk in the corner of the room facing at least one wall, usually two, or it would have like a divider on it. with. So you basically had like three little walls in front of you cutting you off from the rest of the world, right? And, and it was called the safe seat. And either you got sent there or you got sent to a safe seat in another classroom. And while you're in the safe seat, you had to like fill out a piece of paper that was like, why did I do this? Uh, I know it was wrong because, and like, I won't do it again. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> and so if you, you, the, like the, the, like, um, 
kind of like uh how do you, what would you call that the the levels of like punishment as it were were like you get a verbal warning you get a i think you, depending on the teacher you might have gotten two warnings and then you go to the safe seat and then like if you're bad enough there you're either safe seat of another classroom or uh principal's office and then like from there it's like they call your parents so i never i don't think i ever had my parents call i mean unless it was like an injury or something uh yeah, we just got sent to the corner like we just had to stay yeah i was gonna say it's essentially being sent to the corner with extra steps we didn't even have yeah we didn't even have a seat we just stood in the corner <laughs> i would have uh, loved to have a seat that reminds me of that um cold opening for malcolm in the middle where like uh i mean have you seen that show no oh my gosh it's so good okay so the the two parents are like getting ready for bed they're like did we forget something uh, uh, and you know if it was important you'd probably remember whatever and they go to bed and then they wake up and they come out the next morning and their their youngest kid at the time dewey is like he he was standing in the corner but he fell asleep so he's like slumped in the corner but he's still on his feet and they're like oh man we forgot about dewey so they're like wake him up but they're like that's all right son you've you've suffered your punishment lying up go to bed and he's like uh, rubbing his eyes he's like really tired he's like thanks dad <laughs> that's funny it's a really funny show you should watch it i highly recommend it it, especially since you grew up with so many siblings, that's like, it's peak yeah. sibling comedy is, is what that show is, honestly. <laughs> uh, anyway. No, peak sibling comedy is when you start using your mom jokes on each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? They didn't do a whole lot of that, surprisingly enough, but uh, there's still a lot of uh, great humor in that show. Pretty much all the way through to the end. They really only, it really only drops off at the end of the series finale but that's a different discussion for another day watch it uh, anyway i'll pass the baton back to you for your next story okay so one time so i, I it was it was back in the it was back in the upwards days oh upwards? yeah y'all know what that so, is yeah so Maybe upwards was it. a program yeah upwards was a program we had at our church and i know a lot of different places do it but we we had it at our church similar. for a long time yeah yeah for a long time where it was basically i mean it was basically just sports we had well it was basketball i was gonna say i don't think we did anything other than basketball yeah so upward we did upwards basketball where we had you know the adults in the church would teach kids or would train kids or train would would teach kids how yeah coach kids how to play basketball and then you had cheerleading teams yeah Um, the girl generally it would be the girls were cheerleaders but the boys would play basketball but yeah, you could did if have, you were a girl. I don't know if you they would let you cheerlead if you were a boy. I don't think we saw don't think any so. boy want to. Like I don't, I don't know how that would have worked because no boy ever asked you. But if you were a girl and you wanted to play basketball, well, yeah. you could. Yeah, but that's because I think mostly it's because the uniforms they had cheerleading uniforms that were skirts. Right. Yeah, I don't think any boy would have looked at shorts. that and been like, "Yeah, I want to wear that." I mean, they probably if they if a boy was like, "I want to cheerlead," they probably had a boy's uniform. Yeah, but possibly. because we never but ever yeah. saw that, no one ever was like, yeah, "Let me do that." Yeah, yeah. And, and, and kids, kids our age back then yeah. were very like, "I'm a man. I'm not gonna do anything girly." Like, yeah, no and, and girls it's allowed, like, sort of thing. When when you get to a certain age, like in high school, I could see the appeal of wanting to be a male cheerleader because you get to like throw girls, <laughs> and and the girls are actually attractive at that age, right? Not not anymore. Not for me. I'm sorry. Let me clarify. When you're that yeah, age, um, your um, peers are attractive. <laughs> There we go. You should you should just stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, the NFL um, girls are hot there. Anyways, so <laughs> back then in the upwards days, I had a couple of my teammates over. Um, like so, we had practice on Thursday nights and then games on Saturday mornings. I kind of miss that. So, I'm not gonna lie. Not necessarily I do the too. playing I it, that. but just like the, the the whole atmosphere of, the, of yeah, being the in the cons- church the concession on Saturday, everyone and, cheering yeah. their kid, the kids on. Yeah. It was good times. It was fun. It was fun times. Um, anyway, so we had I had after practice one night, I had a couple of my teammates came over and stayed at my house that night, and then all through Friday and then um, into Saturday, so we could we they rode to basketball the games with me, and um, I want to say on Thursday night, I'm pretty sure it was that night before like before the whole day that we had to spend together. Um, we we're it was super late at night. And um, we were just in my room, just like laughing, making jokes, talking about general guy stuff. Okay. And this is like, you know, I remember it was like, I was in third or fourth grade, I think. Um, so it was when we were first starting to like talk about like boy things. Mm. Um, 
and I remember we were, I don't remember what the topic was, but we started talking about like, you know, penises <laughs> and, um, and uh, so we were talking yeah. about that and then I get a knock on the door and I go outside and mom's like, come to, come to your dad, like come to our, um, come to our room. Oh, as you like, say you're like great. in your room probably, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I went into the parents' room and I got in trouble for talking about penises. And I was like, what? Did they, like, have I, they, I didn't wait at this point. Had they given you the talk yet? No, no. Okay. Actually, and not, not to throw my parents on the bus. I never actually got that talk. I, everything I learned about that. I learned from people from church that went to public school. <laughs> They're like teaching you in the back of the bus on the way to senior camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. It's sad, a little sad, but that's, Oh, that's yeah. wow. Um, but yeah, no, I got in trouble for that. And I, it, it took me years later to finally realize, like, why did I get in trouble for like that? that like, so I mean, stupid. do you like, remember specifically what thing. you were talking about? I don't, I don't remember exactly. Like, it's not like you were straight up talking about sex. You were just like talking no, about. We didn't know anything like, about that. Was it, I bet it was like more like, do you guys ever go to PE and it comes out in two streams? <laughs> I don't. I genuinely don't remember. Well, we didn't know anything about like you know sex back then. Right, we were yeah. still young, so. But we were yeah. We were just talked about that. And I just remember saying that word over and over again, Penis. and then got called. Yeah, and then got called to the mom's mom's room and got in trouble. And I was like, I don't know. Like yeah, again, it took me a few years to finally realize. Like guys talk about this all the time. Oh Why yeah, I get in trouble for it. The thing, the trick is, you got to learn all the other like, other the synonyms and euphemisms for penis, right? You can't just. <laughs> When you're around, like, your parents or, like, you know, people who don't like, approve tally of it, you can't just say penis. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be like, wiener. Uh, uh, Willie the one-eyed wonder worm. You know. Okay. <laughs> the purple Yoder helmet. slinger, uh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket ship. Uh, or, um, what my, my mom did, actually, to both me and Grace, when we were kids... Wait, I didn't learn the English word for penis first. I learned it in Tagalog. So, like, I learned TT, which is penis in Tagalog, and then uh, Pepe, which is vagina, and um, Dede, which is boobs. Huh. It's kind of funny. Yeah. And, uh, that's, yeah, so, like, for the longest time, for a while, actually, I didn't know the word penis. I just knew TT. <laughs> now, you know, I think the intent there was so I didn't go around saying penis 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 which fair enough um but i think that i went a little too long before i learned the word fully yeah arguably but um yeah yeah very interesting little and i remember like at one point um our in music class in elementary school uh the teacher was telling us about the like the difference we, we only learned the difference i think between eighth notes and quarter notes at that age right and so to like mm-hmm um verbally communicate the the like the rhythm how the rhythm would work she was like quarter notes are ta 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 and eighth notes are t t t t t t so i was like look mom i drew a t t and it was an eighth note and she was like what <laughs> oh my word that's hilarious yeah it's pretty great and then like as as she was teaching that, I was like snickering in the back of the class, telling my friends what she's doing in, in Filipino. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty oh, great. Pretty so great. there was. I mean, it's not. I didn't get in trouble for this, but uh, there was time. Um, and I, I we we may mark this as explicit just because. But uh, <laughs> when I first learned about what. So so do you remember when we had at the church we had advanced we like advanced and beginner bells. Oh yeah, yeah. I miss so those too. the guy, the guys in the in the advanced bells, it was me. It was for the most part, it was me, Davis, Carson, Cameron, Zach. Uh, I think there was one other person I cannot remember. Wait, which Zach? And then my future brother-in-law. Okay, because there's a couple at that point in, in the in there, time. Yeah, there, there was, was there like was a couple, at least two Zachs running around the yeah. church that were our age. Um. Um, and then Clayton was Clayton and Ethan were leading it. So they were they were leading us, and then we were playing the bells. Well, there, there was one point that one of the pages that we had, there was like you know there was measure measure sixty nine, <laughs> and all the guys next to me were snickering and laughing, and I was like, what? Like what's 
what's that? Like, what, what what are you laughing at? And they're like, it says 69. I was like, they don't even okay. know why it was funny at that age, I bet. Yeah, I was like, okay, what? I don't know what, why it's so funny. And then, so Zach explained it to me, and I was like, oh, okay, now I get Wait, it. Wait, but what was his explanation? I'm curious to know what he thought that meant. I, I Do don't remember. remember. I, just oh remember. I, remember this, I remember the scenario. I don't remember the exact details. I bet it was funny and not accurate in the slightest. Well, well here's the thing. Clayton didn't know what it meant either. What did he think it meant? Do you remember? No. Oh, man. I just remember, well, well, here's the thing. I remember when they were laughing, Zach told me that we went into practice, and we were all laughing at it. <laughs> and then Clayton was like, what are you laughing at? We're like, it says 69. He's like, what is what is that? And then so ah! Ethan took him Ethan took him out of the room ah! to then explain it to him. And then they the, came back, and Clayton goes, I don't want to hear you guys laughing at that ever again. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> That's so funny. Wait, how how old were they been at that time? Oh, it was like fifth or sixth grade. No, I mean Clayton and Ethan. Oh, Clayton and them. Oh gosh, I remember. They're they're a few years older. Yeah, they're older they're than like, me. Yeah, they're like Cody's age, so about six years older than me, I think. Okay. I don't remember exactly. It's been so long. I don't remember their birthdays. They would have been in high school, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, they were in high school. Okay. So there's a chance they knew. Well, except for Clayton, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Clayton was also homeschooled, so. Was Ethan, though? No, Ethan wasn't. Ah, there you go, then. He, I, I wouldn't, probably I wouldn't doubt that he knew. Yeah, that's probably why. Because <laughs> all of my friends were all public school. Yeah. Have you seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? No, I've been meaning to get around to oh, that. Oh, there's a great bit where it. they encounter their future selves, and they're like, how do we know that's, that you're us? And the, the, the others are like, what number am I thinking of right now? And then they're like, 69, dudes! <laughs> oh, my word. Uh, so good. That's hilarious. Anyway, um, so this next... I, I, like, I only have two, like, standalone stories, but, like, these next two, like, points on my little list are more... I would more describe them as, like, segments than, than stories. So... I'm going to put this question out to you as well. And I get, you know, to the audience, why not for a little engagement? Uh, what are some punishments you remember getting? Um, like repeat punishments, ideally, I guess, but any punishment that really sticks out from your, from your parents or whoever. So like for me, um, the main thing is I didn't really have a problem with swearing as a kid, but I, I tended to lie a lot. So whenever my mom caught me in a lie, she would make me drink vinegar, which if you've never had vinegar alone, it tastes horrible. I mean, it smells it's bad too. So bad. Um, but the taste is awful. Like it's, it's horrible. And I would never like she would never make me drink more than like a spoonful at a time. That's how bad it was, right? It's not like she would shove the bottle in my mouth and like chug. No, it's 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 bad stuff. And uh, um, I always remember whenever I'd get get sent to timeout, we had this little uh, stool that I'd sit on, and then she had this timer. And it was, uh, it had like water and then another fluid that was dyed red. So like when you flipped it over, the, the red fluid would flow upward and spin these little dials that had a black and white spiral on it, like the intro to the Twilight Zone. And it was, it was mesmerizing watching the fluid go up and spin and, and the dials and everything. It was very satisfying to look at. I wish we really... still had that timer. It was actually really cool. Um, We got spanked a lot. Yeah, and I got was, spanked. Well, here's the thing. So we had a myriad of things to get spanked with. We had <laughs> we had a wooden pa- uh, wooden paddle that he used. We never did have a paddle. Um, we had a spoon, though. We had obviously Dad had his belt. Um, he used his hand on a couple occasions. Um, we had a rubber tube that he used every now a and then. Rubber tube. Yeah. What? Um, and then if it was really bad. We had a bush out front that he would have us go grab a switch from. Oh, the old switch. We never, yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, actually, I say wooden spoon, but that was usually used on our hands. Um, I don't think our my parents ever used anything other than an open hand on our butt cheeks. Uh, I will say, though, I know they're not made of rubber, but when you say rubber tube, I'm just picturing your, your dad using a boom whacker to spank you. No, no, it was it was like a flex. It was like a flexible piece of tubing, like oh. maybe something you find on like the back of a toilet, but like really long instead of just oh, teeny okay. tiny. Like I mean, it was it was about this long, not uh, rigid, very 
Yeah, no, it was not rigid. It was okay. very flexible. My mental image, though, was just a boom, a boom, a wagon. boom wagon. I think that's hilarious. Dum, 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 yeah, dum, he's like switching him out too to like play music as he spanks you. <laughs> Plays Thunderstruck on your butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, and, and he's like screaming <laughs> while he spanks you. And it, it actually bleeped out there. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, he's screaming thunder when he, as he spanks you. Oh, okay, you. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's so funny. Um, I'm trying to think of any other unique punishments. Um, I mean, yeah. So my my mom did the same thing with your as yours, sort of, where she just put stuff that was disgusting on my tongue. Right. But for right. me, it was it was like, so I absolutely hated barbecue sauce growing up. <laughs> and I can't stand it now, actually. Oh wow! Mostly really? because mo- yeah, mostly because I didn't like it as a kid, and then it was. Because I didn't like it as a kid, it was used as a punishment. Oh, interesting. So, that's so that's anytime a little sad because it's delicious. Yeah, anytime I said something bad or lied or like I had, you remember my when I had that really bad tick of licking my lips all the time. <laughs> yeah, my dad. Anytime sometimes I, I'd like to lick my lips. <laughs> yeah. So anytime, anytime I saw that, or anytime they saw that, they would slather barbecue sauce on my tongue, and I couldn't stand it. It was disgusting. That's that's so funny, actually. <laughs> barbecue sauce that's a very unique punishment actually that's it's childhood <laughs> trauma right there baby <laughs> that's funny oh man <laughs> i don't think uh let's see i used to hate mayo but then my parents never made me eat it as a punishment now i enjoy it huh yeah i don't i, I can't relate to the barbecue sauce thing i apologize <laughs> no it's fine very few people can <laughs> <laughs> i i would yeah i would imagine so um oh they, they used horseradish on a couple of occasions as well oh i could see that yeah horseradish if you don't like that then yeah i can't i don't know anybody who does like that uh, yeah i'm trying to i'm struggling to remember what it even tastes like i know it's like similar to wasabi but it's, yeah, it's not like good super either. it's like super spicy and just it, yeah. it, all in all just disgusting i mean i don't hate wasabi it's got to be done right though right like whenever i go get sushi i'll pour a little soy sauce in my dipping tray and throw a little bit of wasabi and ginger in there and stir it up and it, you get a, a nice good flavor from the mixture of it. but you don't eat so- wasabi alone that's not good so, yeah so wasabi was also ruined for me by carson because he had these wasabi gumballs that oh. were like prank they're like prank gumballs that sounds gross but they looked like green apple and so he just <laughs> gave me one he gave me one one day i was like oh sweet gumball and i ate it and it was the nastiest tasting thing ever it was so gross dude you just unlocked a memory for me. I used to have, I, I think I brought them around church once or twice. You remember I used to have bacon gumballs? Yes, I do remember that. They were a nice shiny brown color. And uh, <laughs> they didn't smell great, but I loved how they tasted. I wouldn't say they tasted like bacon. Generally, when you've got a bacon flavored thing and the, the flavor is like, and it's something like a gumball or a soda where the flavor has to be pretty heavily synthesized, it's it's just a mostly like a smoky flavor. And so... Yeah. I didn't hate the taste though. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit, and and I I was like, hey, mom, dad, Grace, you know, you gotta try this, and they all hated it. And so, it it turned into this little game for me almost, where I would go around and I'd try to see if I could find anyone else who didn't hate the flavor. And I eventually found one person, and he was one of my friends at elementary school. But I, and I took it to church too. I remember I had people try it there, and uh, none of them liked it. It was really funny. If you get some of that for our next video. That would be interesting. We could do like bacon products. I don't know if you've ever tried the the classic bacon soda. Um, I have, no. and I I didn't enjoy it, but maybe you will. Who knows? Yeah, no, I have not tried it. I I keep hearing about it, but I have not tried it myself. Yeah, it's yet. a it's the kind of thing where if you if you claim to love bacon in the way I do, it's like oh, you know, you you're, you're almost obligated to at least try it because it's supposedly bacon flavored, according to the label anyway. No, I'm okay. I'm gonna stop talking so I don't ruin the. I don't want to make you th- inherently think it tastes bad. I just didn't like it. <laughs> um. Anyway, I'm, that's out of I'm out of punishments that I can think of. But I uh, will. I would like to introduce in yet another segment I like to call intrusive thoughts. Now, this is an interesting little uh, phrase that is s- kind of recently entered the the public uh, lexicon slash and zeitgeist, if you will, where you kind of see this uh, occurring in a sort of meme-like way where someone's doing something they wouldn't normally do. They're kind of like 
just uh, giving into their intrusive thoughts, as as uh, you know, it's describes it perfectly. Mm-hmm. That's why it's being used, and so that that tends to happen a lot when you're a kid. And so I wanted to ask the question, and this again can go out to the audience as well. Do you remember any any times you gave into your intrusive thoughts? I have two here that I was able to remember in particular that I and I got in trouble for both of them. Uh, the first one I called the elbow of death. So, one time, I was out on the playground in elementary school, and we I was standing in um, in line to do the... So, they were called the bells, and what they were was, they were kind of like monkey bars, but it was this one big long bar that went across the way, and there were these big bell-shaped metal hoops that hung from it, and they were a little higher than the other the m- other monkey bars that were on the playground. And so you had to be like at least fourth grade, I think, in order to even do them. Otherwise, you'd get yelled at by the teachers for trying to do it because they were higher up and they were a little high- harder to... You had to like actually aim where you were throwing your hand to grab the next one. And they <laughs> swung back. They swung around as we were hanging from them. And so I was waiting in line to do them. And I was... And there was a per- there were people in front of me and there were people behind me. And I just like had this slide where I was like... What if I just let my, I just like throw my elbow backward as hard as I possibly can? Just for no reason. Why not? And then I went, ha! and I like elbowed the person behind me super. Uh, that is a very big spike in my audio. I apologize. I elbowed the person behind me super hard oh. directly in the gut, and he went, oh! and he like fell over, and I was like, oh crap. I just physically attacked someone. So I like took off into the, the, we had this playground and then right next to it was this, what felt anyway, like a giant field. It's not super big, but it's sizable. And I like took off. I was like, maybe if I get far away enough, the teachers won't see me. And, but they saw me and they called me back because the guy went and t- told on me. Rightly so. I definitely, probably, if he was an adult, that's like, that's how you get a hernia right there. You get punched so hard it just bursts. <laughs> oh gosh, I feel still feel bad about that. But uh, yeah, I just just like you should you should throw your elbow backward. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I can I cannot recall any time. I'm trying really hard. I can't really recall any time that I just had a random thought. I was like, yeah, I should do that. Like I I genuinely cannot think of any. I'm I'm sure there were a lot. I just right, right. don't remember. Well, I'll regale us with my second tale then. And hopefully by then, maybe you'll come up with something. So, uh, growing up, my I had a neighbor two houses down. Uh, and her name, well, she still lives around here. Her name is Hallie. And uh, because we live so close to each other, we ended up becoming pretty close friends. And we were at each other's houses a lot. And so, in their house, in the, the, the not the like master bathroom, but the main bathroom that you would use if you're if you're like your your company, right? You don't go all the way into the back of the house to use a master master bathroom. It's the one right by the kitchen. It's that kind of bathroom. It had a it used to have a laundry chute in the bottom of the vanity. And so you could throw your clothes down there and it would come out the hole in the ceiling down in the basement, right by the washing machine. But this particular chute, so you obviously you had to open the like hatch at the top in order to gain access to it and throw whatever down it. But you could also, downstairs, it had a hatch on the bottom, so you could close it off and um, hasp it shut to keep it closed uh, if, if in case, for whatever reason, you just didn't want clothes to fall down out of it, right? So at this point, it was closed, and my friend was showing me the fact that it even existed because I didn't know it for a while. It didn't. I didn't know it was there because the, the, like, thing you open it kind of blends in with the rest of the vanity right kind of just looks like a cabinet door and so she's like look and you can it's a little hatch and it goes down to the basement and she like i don't know why but she climbed halfway down into it and, and it was to the point where like it was just her butt and legs that were sticking out and i was just sitting there like looking at her i was like my bo- and into your voice my intrusive thoughts were like you should push her down you should send her on a little ride <laughs> and so i was like let's do this shove and she like went down and the door was shut and on the oh, bottom no. she, she was like in the ceiling and she was like ah help and so her dad had to go down there and open the thing and free her and i got in trouble. <laughs> oh, oh my god that's <laughs> oh that's so funny yeah 
Good times. Good times. Oh. Good old, good uh, old so intrusive have, thoughts. I, can, I genuinely can only think of like one scenario. Wait on me. I, I know that there's more, but I didn't get in trouble for it because it was kind of its own self punishment. Um, <laughs> Those are the best kind that you know, we get yeah. to learn from a learn lesson. Ah, man. So I was playing. We used to go to my granny's house back when she lived. She used to live out in Humansville and Humansville. Like really, yeah, that's what it's called. It really, yeah, that's what it's called. That's hilarious. That's like the same um, energy as the Greendale humans. Oh, um, it was a, like a really secluded house, and it was. I love that place. It was so much fun, but. Um, whenever we went out there, we we used to have we used to have paintball guns, um, way back in the day, and they were like, um, they ran on like these the the normal like CO two cartridges. They weren't like the giant tanks you fill up now. They were tiny ones you screw in there, and then it had a, a cap you put over it. Right. Yeah. And then they they were like the, you had to pump it, so you like you pull it back, and then you push it forward, and that's how you load one one thing. You shoot it, and you pump it again. Right. It wasn't it, just it wasn't like, like, it wasn't like a. Out, it wasn't a modern marker. one, yeah, where you're just, like shooting things. Mm-hmm. Um, that would have been wild. But as a kid, I wasn't able to pump it properly, so I had to like set the butt on the ground and like and like push it down like that, and then pull it up because I could, I didn't have enough strength to do it with one hand. Yeah, kind of like in the same way. If you, if you ever had the 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 plastic lightsaber that you had to like fling to make it yep. come out, you had to like stab mm-hmm. it into the floor to put it back in the hilt. Yeah. So yeah, I would set the butt on the ground, and then I would just shove my hands down and like try to push it down and then to cock it mm-hmm. and there was one day i did that after i did that i was like like because we had play it we played like <laughs> capture the flag we'd have like these little water guns that we had put out yeah. in the yard and then you had people trying to shoot each other and capture the flag and i had, i loaded my gun and i like stood up and i looked down at my foot and i was like i wonder how much this hurts <laughs> and then so I, I just like shot it at my foot and oh my gosh that thing hurt like i mean Compared to guns like paintball guns nowadays, it doesn't hurt as bad as, as bad. Mostly oh, yeah. because nowadays are a lot better. Plus, I was a kid back then. <laughs> but um, uh, so, yeah. But uh, being yeah, being a kid back then, it was like I just shot it straight at my foot and caused a welt to swell up, and oh my gosh, it hurt so bad. I can only imagine. just because I had that stupid thought like, hey, I should shoot myself with this. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Reminds me of that um the the Christmas story um movie. You shoot like, your eye out, kid. kid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Classic, dude. Classic. <laughs> Man. Gosh. Those were the days, I've, huh? I've got lots of stories of getting in trouble with my fiance, but those are neither here nor there. You could tell them if you want to. We don't have to. I never <laughs> said you had to be a kid when you got in trouble if you wanted to tell a story about it in this episode. No, I was I was just joking because. Uh, well, actually, David's in trouble now. He, he he's in trouble for not showing up. So certainly, yes. Ah oh, man, no, that's a uh, yeah. It's rough. Man, it's all right. Goodness gracious, I am tired. Uh, we all are, my friend. That is a human condition. Unfortunately. Yes. It's been a long week, mm. and it's only Friday. Wow, yeah. I have to go back to work tomorrow. Man, I'm trying to... I want to think of another story to tell, but I just... I'm drawing a blank here, you know? I feel like... I don't know. Yeah, it's like... I, I could probably tell a lot of stories about getting in trouble, but they're just... They're not, inter- they're not entertaining... And they're not like they're not funny. There's nothing to laugh at. It's just like basic stuff as a kid that you know you got in trouble for. Right. Yeah. Like it. it yeah. They're not. Inter- they're not something. It's not going to be like, hey, I'm going to tell this story and everybody's going to laugh at it. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got in trouble for doing this, like every other kid. Right. Yeah. What do? You, what do you remember is like the worst thing you did or the worst punishment? Hmm. I'm not really sure. Um, at least I, I can't think of anything that I'd be willing to discuss over a podcast. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, you um, got me intrigued now. Yeah, no, sorry. That one I'm keeping to myself. <laughs> or what if, would you, would you tell me after we stop recording? I don't know. Probably not. Cause it was pretty bad. Okay. All right. So. 
Uh, well, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I think maybe. Funnily enough, I don't remember what exactly my punishment was. It was probably like losing, like being banned from electronics. But um, I hate when that it probably happens. cost a lot of money. So when when at one point, so my neighbors across the street have like a really big, like side and backyard. Like it's just a really big lot, bigger than most lots in this area, like in this residential area, and so they have they had this like part of their yard where it's like low and then there's like a pipe in the ground it's just like a random section of pipe in the ground and one on one end it comes out horizontally and the other end it's like sticking up vertically and so one time i put a hose in there and i just i was curious to see whether or not the pipe was like empty all the way through whether or not water would actually come out the other end and it did and uh me and my neighbor friends we often used to screw around in their giant yard over there so we were all over there and i i accidentally left the water on all night long and 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 my neighbors came out and to their like backyard to like a like a little pond in their backyard it's probably pretty pretty uh pretty high water bill that month oh oh there was there's was one time so i don't remember if i actually got in trouble or not but there's one time so we were on vacation and we were in virginia and we were staying at some friend's house and it was a really it had been a really really long day like we had been doing a lot of sightseeing we because we were there for a wedding so we were doing a lot of sightseeing we were there for like rehearsals and stuff and the night that night we were going back to their house and everybody got out of the car or everybody got out of the van i got out and i instead of walking to the house because i don't know <laughs> why my i don't know what my brain was thinking i just remember it had been a long day so i was exhausted and i was a kid i didn't really think i wasn't thinking clearly but instead of following everybody else and, you know, getting out of the van and walking up to the house, like an idiot, I got out and walked around the car and went across the street to the house across the street. <laughs> it was like, and I, I remember yeah. I stood there on the porch and I was looking, I was like, did they get a new house today? I get a new like, house. This doesn't look familiar. I was like, this doesn't look familiar. So I like knocked on the door, rang the, and this was like 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> okay, so I, I knocked on the door. I, I, I rang the doorbell. I heard a dark dog bark. And I was like, they didn't have a dog. I was like, did they get a new dog today too? I was like, what the heck is going on? And the lady opens the door and she's like, I mean, in her nightgown, she's like super sleepy. Like she just woke up. Oh, that's so funny. And I, and I was like, you look similar to the person I'm supposed to be with. But I was like, you're not the person I'm supposed to be staying with. I was like, who are you? That's hilarious. It's like, where, where, where am I? And she's like, oh, I think you're looking for the house across the street. I was like, oh. I'm sorry, my bad. So I ran across the street again, and everybody else was, like, inside already. So, like, nobody was outside. Apparently nobody knew I was missing. So I was, like, I ran around the back, to the back, uh, the back door, and I was, like, the light turned on. Like, there was, like, security light motion sensor light turned on. And, um, so, like, super bright. So I just sat outside until somebody noticed that the light was on and came out. And then they're like, what are you doing out here? I was like, you're supposed to be inside. I was like, yeah, well, I went across the street on accident. <laughs> and we all, like, we all went to bed that night. But then, like, the next day we were getting ready to go to the wedding. And Dad was, like, talking. He's like, so why did you do that? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> you know the weird part is? When I think, I, I know that that happened. But when I think about it. It feels like it didn't. It's like one of those. It's like one of those memories that you're like. It's like surreal. Yeah, it's like, are you sure that happened? Like, are you just making that up, or did that actually happen? But I was like, no, it, it definitely happened. I know that, but it just doesn't feel real. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, you, okay, I had another memory when I was talking about the water. So, have you ever walked in, like gone to the restroom in a bathroom, and then when you go to flush the toilet, you notice it like either the 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 rate at which it drains out into the the sewer output or the rate at which water comes in like fresh water comes in either either it drains too slowly or too much water comes in at once to the point where you realize if you just kept flushing Mm -hmm. it it would overflow and get all over the floor did you ever do that though yes okay there's classic intrusive thoughts now you i don't well maybe if, if you can't remember any specific time then maybe you don't have a story there but i do so, I, you know, and I've done that, you know, multiple places uh, as a kid. But uh, one time I did it at the the old Kentaco Hut by our church. 
Oh no. Yeah, and it was with one of my friends. We were there with my family, and then he, we were eating with him and his mom. And uh, I did it while he was in the bathroom too. Like it was at at that urinal, and I just like realized this will overflow if I flush it three times in a row rapidly. So I did that, and then it started pouring out all over the floor, and and uh, and he started just laughing hysterically at it, right? Because it's funny when you're a yeah. kid, and and so we come back out of the bathroom, and he's still laughing. And so, my, you know, all the adults are like, what are you laughing? Why are you laughing? And he freaking snitches on me. He's like, he points at me and goes, you. And between laughter, he's like, you, you flooded, you flooded the toilet. And then my parents just death stare at me. They're like, you what? And so, uh, again, oh audio word. spike. I'm so sorry. And uh, so they made me tell the employee what I did and apologize for it. And uh, I think they even made me offer to clean it up, but the employee's like, "No, I'll, it's my, I'll, I got it." <laughs> I think. I, I just remember I didn't yeah, end up every having time to you... clean it. I just remember I had to tell an employee what happened. But yeah, I was like so mad at him because he he didn't even like try to not snitch on me. He's just like, "Are you kidding me? Come on, man! I almost got away with that." <laughs> Yeah, there was no, like, that secret look, like, should I tell? Should I yeah, not tell? Yeah, he didn't even. Like, he just nah, was I'm, laughing. I'm, I'm telling. Oh, he totally threw me under. I mean, he didn't have any involvement in it, in it but he threw me under the bus. Uh, what about you? That happens. Can you remember any times where, specifically where you flooded the toilet and it was funny? <laughs> not on purpose. Well, I, like, I did it a couple times, but it, I don't remember specific instances. Uh, like, I thought, I thought, I thought it was funny, but I didn't get in trouble for it because it just... You know, they just thought that somebody put too much toilet paper in there. Mm. Yeah. And, of course, I'm not going to snitch on myself. Of so. course. Yeah, no. What <laughs> idiot would? Who admits to doing things? Like, really? Having a conscience? What does that even mean? More like having a weakness. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so, real quick. One more story. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I went... This was a really, really long time ago. Um, this is back when I lived in KCK. Well, no, not KC. Where was it? It wasn't KCK. I don't remember. It was before we moved to Parkville. We were living in a Wyandotte area. Mm-hmm. And um, I had to go to the bathroom really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And so, and as far as I can remember, there was only like two bathrooms in the house. Which is really strange because it's a big house. Oh, yeah. um, there's only like t- two bathrooms and one of them was a half bath in the basement like in the unfinished basement and it was like it was basically like a shower with a toilet in it <laughs> and it was disgusting all the time yeah it was always disgusting so i never went in there so i i i was i went to the bathroom in the main floor but i didn't get to the bathroom on time like i got to the bathroom and i got like stood in front of the toilet but I like I couldn't hold it any longer, and so it just ran down my leg. Oh! And like an like an idiot, I didn't just like try to salvage it. I just stood there, standing it. in front of the to- <laughs> yeah, just stood there in front of the toilet, just peeing it down my leg. Oh. And I was like, "This is great." And then, yeah, mom, mom and dad, mom was, I mean, mom cleaned it up, but dad was a little upset that I had, like I was in the bathroom but decided to pee on the floor. He's kind I was of like, accepted your fate. Yeah, I was like, I'm sorry, like I couldn't hold it any longer, and I didn't want to like. There's nothing I could do. Like, it just started coming out, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to try to stop it. Man, that reminds me of the time I was sick and I was watching TV, and I. It was when I was a kid, and I like got up. It used to be, I don't remember if you were ever at my house when it the layout was like this, but you used to be able to walk. Like my sister's room had two doors in it. And it used to be directly connected to the kitchen. Like if you were if you were in it now, where the fridge is now, that used to be a door mm-hmm. in her room. Oh wow! No, I and, don't remember that. And um, and and her the bathroom that she has off of her room used to be accessible from the kitchen, and so I remember I ran through the kitchen to get into that bathroom, entered the bathroom, and it threw up onto the toilet and not into it because <laughs> it was I don't know why, but the lid was down, so I it, spl- it bounced off the like glanced <laughs> off the lid and onto the wall, and I was like, oh, so close. Yeah, what what idiot puts the toilet lid down? Jeez, leave it up. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's get rid of toilet lids. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, Start the public restrooms are not there. Yeah. 
So why why do we need them at home? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, missed the toilet there. Um. Oh oh no, I forgot my other story now. Dang it! I was gonna tell an, tell another tale, but I can't remember it now. Uh, That's okay. Yeah. I'd say we've gotten a lot. We've gotten wow. Actually, we've been recording for a decent amount of time now. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a solidly length episode. I'm surprised we actually did. We did as well as we did without that third person to bump off of. Yeah, yeah. But now we'll never, maybe never know David's travel stories. I don't know. Maybe, maybe one of the episodes we do will be like a makeup episode where we just let David atone for his sins. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're we're both we're all allowed one miss at one missed episode. He's missed two though just... at this point. That's true. He has missed two. <laughs> this is his second offense. Uh, anyway, I'd like to see him. I'd like to see how he uh try to work works his way around this one. Mm, yeah, I I'm curious to hear his excuse. As long as it's not like I'm severely injured in a car wreck. Again, I can't stress enough how horrible we're going to look if that happens. Well, you. I haven't said anything bad about him. I I understand. Oh my gosh, you joined in a little bit. You ribbed him a bit. <laughs> Don't deny uh, it. Maybe just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man. Wait, I remember my story. So, all right. My neighbor is directly next door. They the way their house is laid out, you have to. They have the kind of basement where you go in the garage and then down the stairs. So, so mm-hmm. and and it it wasn't. Uh, when we were kids, it wasn't finished yet. But what they had down there, it was like, you know, bare concrete floor, and then they had a TV with a with their Xbox 360, and I think they also had a PS2, and then a pile of games. And so we were playing Halo, probably Halo 3, and uh, we and and we get, it gets to a point where I'm like, man, I I have to pee. And so I'm like, guys, you don't have a bathroom down here, right? And they're like, no, yeah, you're, no, it's unfinished. There's no toilet down here. And so the nearest one is like all the way upstairs, kind of toward the back of their house, actually. And so, but since their basements, like they're they're going to, they were going to, and now they now have a bathroom down there. But so they have a hole right in the floor, like where they're putting in the plumbing, in the, the yeah. concrete. So there's like, I think there's a little bit of dirt at the bottom, right? So they're like, yeah, we we're too lazy to go upstairs, so we just do this. And one of them gets up and goes over to the floor. There's a hole in the floor. Um, unzips his fly and just pees into the hole. <laughs> so I was like, okay, uh, and I did it. <laughs> like that Turkish toilet. Yeah. Well, and it was, but it was like, it wasn't like a hole drilled in the floor. It was like a hole broken into the floor. Like some took a sledgehammer to the concrete so they could dig and then put pipe down. <laughs> Do you ever remember? I didn't get. Oh, um, I love that you. One. You remember at junior camp? Was it, were you ever one of the guys that? We used to, since we had the cabin on the backside facing the pool, like we people in the front, like in the main part of the camp couldn't see us. Mm-hmm. We would anytime we had to pee, instead of running all the way up the hill, we just, we just off the porch. Yeah, just stand on the side of the porch and pee off the porch. Like Dude, I mean, it was. I did that when we did the reunion trip or the the yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Remember, I we were like, all hanging out honked. on the porch at like two a.m. because none of us could fall asleep. I wasn't there for the reunion trip. But... Oh crap! Was that David that went? I th- yeah, I think he did. Oh, it was me and David that were there. That's right. Yeah, was, we went. Yeah, it was like late. I want to say late summer of twenty twenty, maybe. Mm-hmm. It was definitely yeah. not a good choice because like so many people got COVID. <laughs> but uh, it's nice and nostalgic. We should definitely try to do that again. I want to go back so bad. Yeah, I love that camp. It's actually, pretty great. Um, but yeah, it uh. Yeah, I totally did do that. Just just pee off the porch because it was you either because uh yeah you would have to go all the way across this big field to the pool house where the actual bathrooms were, and that was the closest one. Which is really frustrating when you're on the opposite side of the camp, and you have to go pee because the girls could just go back to their cabin. They had a bathroom in the cabin, and it was like right smack dab in the middle of everything, so they didn't have to go very far. Yeah, well, there was the one. There was ones in the mess hall, but they were like one seaters. Yeah, so if you they, go in there and there's someone in there, then you you have to either wait yeah, you're wait it out or you're out of luck. Yeah, but then yeah, if, yeah, you or yeah, just run run across the uh, the entire camp, which is ridiculous. It was a little silly. 
But there's those were good times, man. Good good memories. I got actually so one last story before we wrap up. Thank you, I just I actually remembered. I I actually got in trouble at junior camp one year because me and oh I think I already told this story actually. Go ahead. Go. So me and Jacob and I can't say it's not the I don't think it's the Jacob you're thinking of. It was a different Jacob, but me it's and not Jacob. Me, is it? No, there's like three Jacobs at that point. I know. Um, Wait a minute, three? You, and then there's two Jacob R's. Wait. I know. Okay, wait a minute. I know you can, I guess you can just edit this out, but I know Reynolds. It's not Reynolds. Yeah. It was a different one. What? Um, anyway, so. I don't remember that. Anyways, part. yeah. So, so him and I, we were pretty close growing up. And so at junior camp one year, they were having, they're having meatloaf, not meatloaf, lasagna for lunch. <laughs> and junior camp lasagna is the worst lasagna ever. It was always like. Really? Yeah, it was always like scalding hot on the outside and then still frozen on the inside. And it had no flavor. So you couldn't really eat it. Like there was it was impossible to eat. Hmm. So one day they they told us we're having lasagna for lunch, so him and I just we didn't go to lunch. Which, if you remember, at that camp, it is mandatory to show up for all meals. You don't have to eat. Like so they can No, you don't have to eat, you You just have have to to show up. Yeah, yeah, okay. I yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so we stayed in the cabin, and we didn't go to lunch, because it was, like, free time right after, so, like, let's just, you know, just chill here until everybody's done with lunch, because we got, we had snacks and stuff in the bag, in our bags that we could eat, and then one of the counselors came back after lunch and chewed us out, so we ended up having to, I think there was, like, four or five hours of free time after lunch, mm-hmm. and we had to sit in the cabin for the first two hours. Oh, that's rough, and just do nothing? Yeah. Yeah, and just do nothing. Like we we didn't we couldn't couldn't go play games, couldn't go canoe, couldn't do anything. We had to sit sit in the cabin for two hours of free time. It was so frustrating. I was so mad. I'm not salty about it anymore. I just I was just really mad at the time. Uh, actually, I do remember another. This is just a camp story. I never got in trouble for it, but it was it was definitely you know it's definitely an intrusive thoughts thing. But I didn't get into them this time though. But. Do you remember the the little dinghy that we used to have there in addition to the canoes? Yes, I love that thing. Okay, so there was this really weird detail that I noticed about it, and that was in the in the back um, wall of the of the dinghy, there was a, a hole with a cork in it, and this hole with the cork in it was below where the water line is, which means if you took that cork out, then it would instantly start pouring into the boat, and uh, at the time, I think generally the canoes were only maximum of two people, right? Three. Three. Okay. So, it, and I, that goes for the dinghy as well. So, I it was me, Caleb C, and I can't remember who the third person was. I I don't think it was you, but it could be. I don't know. I just don't remember. Um, and so, me and this third person, we were I like pointed out that cork, and so me and this third person were repeatedly joking about. Uh, pulling it out you know giving giving into the intrusive thoughts and just popping that cork out of the hole to see what happens and it was just freaking cave about to the point where you remember this was the year that uh, a storm came in before we went to camp and uh tore the roof off oh, the chapel bl- yes so, yes so he we were on that half of the lake on that side of the bridge and he made us paddle up to where the the chapel was like the roof was halfway in the water and he climbed out and he used the roof as a like a dock to get up out of out of the boat which was against the rules. You were not supposed to leave uh-huh. or enter a boat unless it was by the, the one dock where they were all actually parked. And so, we, we yeah, we, we like, psyched him out enough where he bailed on the on the dinghy mid-journey. It was, it was really funny. That's how, hilarious. How, how much it got to him. We never I didn't did realize that... I didn't realize that that dinghy had a, a, a maximum number of people because we put, like, six or seven people in that boat at one time. Really? I don't remember being that Yeah. Big. Yeah, we yeah we put we fit like six people in there, and then we had we all had water guns that we were filling up with lake water. And <laughs> yeah. Basically, we we basically made war on the rest of the lake. Anytime somebody got in a canoe and paddled out, we were right up on them, like spraying them. I bet you, I bet you that was probably too many people in that dinghy. Like, I bet if a counselor saw that, they would have been like, "Get out of there!" <laughs> I don't know we never got in trouble for it, That's so funny. I don't know. It was funny. All right, I'd say it's we got to probably this is. Uh, that's it for this episode. 
I'm, I'm out of yep. stories. Me too. So, uh, wow, for once, Jake doesn't know what to say. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we appreciate every, each and every one of you. I mean, listening. That's the, thanks for listening. Uh, stay tuned, as always. We'll see you next month, and we'll see you in 20 years. See ya, guys.